Hello there, this is Mark Wright from Argos Dog Training in Boston and today we're gonna talk about puppy fights. Yes, you heard me correctly. Puppies that fight each other. We're gonna see teeth, we're gonna see chasing, we're gonna see grabbing, we're gonna see wrestling, we're gonna see all those things. Um, there's a disclaimer here. None of this is really fighting. Uh, Frank likes to use the word fight in the title of the video, but have you ever watched your puppy play and then wondered, is that normal play behavior? Is my puppy a bully? Is he fighting the other dogs way too much? This video will answer those questions for you. This video will show healthy play. It'll also show things that we interrupt at our puppy kindergarten class. So if you'd like to learn more about socialization and puppy dynamics, this is the video for you. It's still very exciting. There will be a lot of rough and tumble play as we talk about how puppies interact and how we can use their playtime together to teach them valuable facts about the world. So here we go. Okay, so we will cut back to these uh, gladiators of the grass, these cute, cute, cute puppies running around. We'll be showing that video in a minute, but before we do that, we have to talk about some very important things like the fact that Frank likes me to use violent words, things like fight. But you know what? It's not only his fault because a lot of people see puppies interacting like that and they think that the puppies are actually fighting each other. Um, so it's not really his fault. Um, Frank likes me to use the word bully, bully a lot. Like if it, in every video, if I use bully six times, Frank would be a happy man. Um, so the puppies are not really bullying each other too, but there are things going on. And that's why it is socialization. Well, kinda. What you're seeing in those videos is actually pro-social behavior. And we've been talking about socialization a little bit here, right? So let's first talk about some misconceptions about socialization. A lot of my clients feel like it is very important to socialize their puppies. So because of that, they look for every opportunity for their puppy to meet another dog. Whether it's on leash, it's at the dog park, or anywhere that they can see another dog and let their puppy interact, they feel like this is good socialization. But the fact of the matter is, socialization can be broken into three categories. It can be broken into pro-social, social, and antisocial behavior, right? So really in the real world, what I want from my dogs is I want my dogs to be social um, with a little bit of pro-social. And I'm gonna explain that all right now. Social means that a dog can see the thing in the world and be okay with it, right? A dog is well socialized to a bus. When you walk down the sidewalk with your dog, it sees a bus and it doesn't care. You know, it continues sniffing at the tree. It continues doing the things that it was doing anyway. Like it just sees it, it knows it's there, it acknowledges the fact that the bus is around or the dog is around or the person with the cane is around, but it does not care about that. Um, not getting excited and, and not being startled in any way because of the existence of this object or this person. And that is what a well-socialized dog is to me, when nothing in the world really changes the dog to make them so that way they get too excited or they get too fearful. Pro-social. Pro-social is when a dog wants to interact with something, when they wanna put their paws on it, their mouth on it, when they run, run up to it, they wanna to touch it, they wanna smell it. All of that is pro-social behavior. And those behaviors are generally good behaviors for the most part, but it is important that we allow our dogs to be social and then give them the opportunities to be pro-social when it is appropriate. That's a big thing, when it is appropriate. Um, a lot of the times we think of social as pro-social, so that causes us to approach people when our dog is on the leash, asking, you know, Somebody might say, hey, that's a cute puppy, can I pet him? And we immediately say, yes, sure, no problem. Um, with my dogs, I say most of the time, no thank you, and I keep it moving. Um, because I want my dogs to make an association that when they're on the leash with me, um, I want them to be social. I want them to, to exist with the person in the world without getting upset about them, 
without getting too excited about them. And that's what I want the association to be made. Now, if I allow my dog to get petted by people, and if my dog really loves people, what will happen is when I put the leash on the dog, the dog will start to anticipate when we see people, they're gonna pet me. This is gonna cause excitement, right? And then pretty soon you might have a dog that you're walking down the sidewalk and the person didn't say anything about your dog, but then your dog is trying to jump on them, trying to seek attention from them because, you know, that's what they learned as a puppy. Everybody wants to pet me. Everybody needs to pay attention to me. Um, another thing can happen is that your puppy could be a little bit shy about people. Maybe they're going through a puppy development stage where they're more shy than normal. And, um, and somebody says, can I pet your puppy? And then they bend down to pet the puppy. The puppy runs behind our leg, right? The puppy does not want to be petted. A lot of the times I'll see people encourage their puppy to be petted or even move their puppy and give the puppy to the other person thinking that this fear is, is unwanted. Um, but what that can actually do is it could cause the puppy to become more hesitant about people. If we are going to make our puppies interact with people, it's important that we read what they're trying to say to us and never pass their boundaries, right? So this video is mainly about how to understand the dynamics of how puppies interact with each other and with the world. Um, so having said all that, let's watch some clips. So it starts off with, um, it starts off with some puppies running. Um, there's a there's a little pointer there and it looks like a Irish cream golden retriever and they're playing around You guys notice how this play looks right you see in all the biting um, Going on there's some other dogs some other puppies playing. Oh, there's a little roll over there um, You see all the biting going on all the chasing um, That's because every game that a dog plays is a hunting game so what happens is that they're practicing the skills that they would need if they were going to hunt for prey. You know, chasing, um, biting, fighting, all the things that they would do as they're going for prey. Now, the reason why I do this puppy class and I allow these puppies to interact with each other is because I really want them to learn how to socialize um, with each other. And what I mean by that is to recognize that there are different temperaments of dogs out in the world and they're going to come into contact. There's a possibility they're going to come into contact with all these different personality types as they go through life. Um, in my class, what I would like them to learn is I like them to learn how to turn play on and how to turn play off. Because if a dog understands that, then a fearful dog will become more confident and, and a confident dog will also be able to recognize the signs in another dog that they might not want to play, which will make them a lot easier to get along with, you know, for that other dog. So those are the reasons. Um, so we're moving on to clip two here as our dogs are practicing uh, play and interaction. So right here, we see this little pointer dog and he has his mouth definitely into um, the little doodle. And you see me here interrupt the play. There was nothing nefarious going on there. There was no bad behavior there. This is natural things that puppies do in order to learn how to um, grow into being confident dogs that have the ability to hunt. But as a human watching that, what I'm watching is that the pointer has his mouth on the doodle's neck, throat. And he's shaking his head back and forth a little bit. And he's doing things like that. Now, in normal, in the wild, that would be fine. But because I don't want our puppies to grow up to really be killing things, I want to stop that behavior and play. What happens with the little puppy is that they want to play. And they start to realize, oh, every time I get on this dog's neck, Martin comes around and he, um, and he separates me. So I can't play. He holds me away. So I can't play for an instant. Um, pretty soon they'll start to self-regulate. They'll start to realize that like, if I touch the neck, that's when Martin comes and stops the play. I want to continue playing so I don't touch the neck, basically. But if you watch that clip, what you will see is that as I break it up, the doodle, instead of moving away from the pointer, moves towards the pointer. In other words, the doodle liked that, was enjoying that play. Right. Um, and that is an important thing to keep in mind as we watch and we interact with dogs. 
Just because we're uncomfortable with what a dog is doing to another dog doesn't mean that the dog is uncomfortable about that. And the thing about these young dogs is that when they are playing and interacting with each other, we might have to step in a bunch of times, you know? So he's back at it. I'm sure somebody's eventually gonna step in here. Yup, right on the neck there. This is not bad behavior or unwanted behavior. If you look, the golden has the, has the pointer's ear. And here is somebody stepping in breaking it off. You see, notice the golden does not move away. The golden is like, wait, what's going on? Why do we stop? And then finally moves away because probably looking for another friend to play with, right? So he stays there like, hey, what's going on? And, and the pointer, you know, is held back. Um, all right, so now we have two different dogs. We have a West Highland Terrier and we have a Dachshund. It's always good to watch different dogs play. Um, you see a little play bows here and there going through. There's chasing going on. Um, this play is the same. Dachshunds like to roll, so do corgis. Um, they like to roll, so they end up on their back quite a bit. You see a lot of bounciness. You see play poses where the front end is lowered and the back end is up and things like that. Um, that's normal play behavior. Uh, moving on to the next clip. What a kind of catch. Ah, it's the Dachshund and it's our um, Irish cream golden. You can see every time the Dachshund falls down, he rolls over. Right, he falls down and rolls over. That's what they do. Um, the Irish cream golden here is, is not grabbing onto necks, so we allow the play to continue. We want our dachshund friend or any dog, really, and our dachshund here, I know this dog pretty well, but we want any dog to, um, to know how to turn off play. And that is just by becoming still. All right, right there I decide to jump in and break it up, but our dachshund, he stay, sticks around. Tails wagging, happy to go, getting oh, right back get in. So I'm gonna, of course, let this uh, this golden go and let them continue their play because they're having a great time. It's not a kind of play that I want to break up. It's not a kind of play that I think can be not productive for a dog as they grow older, you know? So those are our little clips of our puppies playing. So you might have some questions. Uh, most people do. Uh, when I'm in class, I get a lot in my puppy kindergarten class. Like, Martin, why did you break that up? When do I break up or stop my puppies from playing? The answer to that question is very simple. Whenever you feel uncomfortable, right? So as soon as you feel uncomfortable with how the puppy's playing or what's going on, step in and stop it. You know, once you stop it, you have the ability to assess what happens. So I've been in situations where I'll stop a puppy from playing. I'll stop them and then the, the puppy, the other puppy they, that the first puppy that I stopped was playing with will take off and run away, right? When I see that happen, then usually I turn the puppy in another direction. And I tell them, go find a new friend, right? I hold them for a couple seconds. I let them focus on another dog and then I release them and then they usually run towards the other dog instead of running to the first puppy that they were playing with. At this age group of play, I don't break things like humping. You know, for puppies humping another puppy, I don't make a big deal out of it. I leave it alone. Usually, you know, if they come into the first class and they're doing a little humping, by the fourth class, they're not doing that anymore. And I didn't say anything to them. You know, they just stop doing it. It's not a big deal. And it's not gonna hurt another dog. Now, of course, as the dogs grow older, um, that can, humping can lead to fights when you have two adult dogs. And that's why I socialize these puppies at this age. As they get older, I'm gonna watch the socialization. I'm gonna watch the dogs differently and I'm not gonna let them explore the same things that they would explore with young puppies. We have to remember that until six months old, five months old, until those ages, the puppy has nursing teeth in their mouth. Those are teeth that are not equipped to break bones or to rupture internal organs. Yeah, they can cause a little scratch and the scratch can be bad if it's caught in the wrong spot. But for the most part, those teeth, although they're so uncomfortable to us, they're really not dangerous to another dog, right? So that means that to me, the dogs have more opportunity to explore. 
right? They have the opportunity to learn about bite inhibition. They have the opportunity to wrestle and play harder than I would allow an older dog to wrestle and play. Another thing is that puppies, most of the time, they're very optimistic and they're very playful. Adult dogs are a lot different. Some of them are grumpy. So they don't want to deal with dogs that might be jumping all over them and doing things like that as they grow into adulthood. So the socialization becomes a lot different, you know, as the dog grows up, as the dog becomes five, six years old, seven years old, um, they, they don't necessarily want to play like how puppies do. And at the same time, they do have those adult teeth where they can do serious damage to another dog. Specific parts of body. So when dogs are playing, I watch, the only thing I wanna break up is when they're biting on the neck and shaking their head. They can nibble on the neck, they can nibble on the ear, they can do things like that, but as long as they're not biting on and shaking their head, then I don't need to interrupt that, <laughs> right? Yes, sometimes I'll see a puppy get rolled a few times and I'll just step in and I'll hold, but really I'm just assessing the situation and seeing how the other dog, the other puppy feels about it. But I don't allow any kind of grab, hold, and shake. Um, this kind of play is not the same with adult dogs. I do not allow adult dogs for them. For the most part, um, my dogs play with my friend's dogs. I don't take them to a central location where there's strangers from around the neighborhood, stranger dogs, stranger families from around the neighborhood in order for my dog to play with those dogs. My dog plays with my friend's dogs and my family's dogs. That'll be it. If I use a dog park, I use it with my friends and my families. And, and as soon as I see another dog come, then we're getting out of there. We're not hanging around. Because adult dogs are a lot different than puppies are. Adult dogs don't send out two members from the family to go socialize with members from surrounding families. You know, they don't do that. And the only reason, puppies don't even do that either. But the only reason why I do it with puppies is because during the early socialization periods of a dog, I want dogs to have experience dealing with puppies of different temperaments. I want them to see a shy puppy. I want them to see a puppy that's more geared towards people and would like less to handle or deal with dogs. I want them to see that puppy that's really high energy and really overstimulated when they're around dogs. That way they learn how to interact with all of them in a, in a fairly peaceful way. I don't really allow puppies to socialize with older dogs unless I really know that older dog. Now there's some older dogs out there who have a really short fuse right? They're just like people. There's some people who tolerate absolutely no foolishness, right? And there's some dogs that are like that too. Um, I'm not going to allow my puppy to really socialize with a dog like that. Puppies are notoriously rude. They do things that are outside social behavior for other dogs. And, and they will get checked. They will get corrected. I would like, if my puppy's going to get corrected by an older dog, I want it to be a patient older dog. I don't want it to be a dog um, that like tolerates no foolishness, right? So if you allow your puppies to socialize with older dogs, make sure it's a friend, a family member, it's their dog. So that way you know um, about the health of the dog, you know about the temperament of the dog, you know. Um, you want a dog that you're friendly with and a dog that is long suffering, you know, meaning that they, they, they go a long way before they start to get upset. And even in those interactions, remember that as soon as you're uncomfortable, stop the interaction. So if the puppy's going again and again and playing with the dog and the dog might just be watching, but you're like, I'm uncomfortable the way that my puppy is playing. You know, the dog might be ignoring the puppy. The puppy's biting on their ear and the dog is just ignoring it. But you're uncomfortable with it. Stop it. Interrupt it. If it's a dog that's trusted, allow them to correct the puppy too. You know, of course you want to be right there. So that way, if they, if they go a little overboard in their correction, you're able to stop. But a well-balanced dog that, um, that you know has the right temperament and is patient, they're not going to go overboard. It's only those short-tempered dogs that will go overboard on a puppy. Another thing I want to talk about again really quickly is over-socialization. Um, that pointer in the video, as I was talking to his owners, what they do is they bring their pointer to um, dog parks. 
And that changes the way that the pointer plays with the other puppies. I've noticed that with, with a bunch of different um, puppies and dogs. Um, the dog actually became over-socialized. Not only that, the dog is interacting with adult dogs on a regular basis and probably has been corrected a lot. I think a lot of the behavior that this puppy is practicing is actually correction behavior and hunting behavior together, you know? So my best um, advice for this is don't over socialize your puppy. Don't put them in positions where they are being pro social all the time. Pro social activity, in my opinion, should be a sliver of the time that you're acting or you're around your puppy. Good socialization is introducing the puppy to the vacuum cleaner. Good socialization is turning on your garbage disposal. Good socialization is walking your dog on the street and letting them see cars, letting them see people, letting them see strollers, letting them see little kids, you know, playing in the playground 50 yards away. That's good socialization. Good pro-socialization is in your house with your family. You know, interacting with the people who they're going to be interacting with all the time. Yes, we want to have a little bit of pro-socialization with strangers or people who are they're not going to be acting all the time. But we want to make sure that that is just like it would be a small part of their life. We want to make sure it's a small part of their socialization training. So my biggest thing is like socialization, like what you see in these videos, once a week. You know, once a week when your puppy's 8 to 20 weeks old. No more than that. Once a week, 30 minutes, right? That's it. That's all they need. Um, and then do the other work outside of that. Yeah. If you like what you see here today, then definitely click the link. You know, give a thumbs up, subscribe, all those things. Um, check the description for details about Argos Dog Training, Argos Dog Training YouTube, the People's Wolf Podcast, all those things. And I hope to see you around. Have fun with your dogs. Can't forget to say, enjoy your dogs.